Welcome back. This is Dr. Gray with MedicalSchoolHQ.net. I'm glad you're able to join us today. I want to take a little bit of time and discuss the path to becoming a doctor. When you figure out what it actually takes to be a doctor, you kind of try to line up everything in your head and you discuss the four years that it's going to take for undergrad and four years that it's going to take for med school and three to seven years that it's going to take for your residency. But it, it's kind of hard to see unless you really write it all down and, and straighten it all out in your mind. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of give you a timeline here of what it actually looks like. So let's go ahead and write our little timeline here, and I'm going to go ahead and put some tick marks in here, some little ones for some little achievements, some big ones for some big achievements, and we will do a couple more of these, and if you've been through the process, you kind of know what these big check marks are. If you haven't been through the process, then you don't. So becoming a physician is uh, unique, very unique. And when you tell people that you want to be a doctor, they usually look at you funny because most people know how hard it is to become a doctor, uh, but most people don't actually know how hard it really is. So let's go ahead and start here. Our first big check mark. We are going to start college this is where you get into college, you're beginning your pre-med courses if you know you already want to be a doctor, maybe you're studying English or law or art or something else if, if maybe you haven't made up your mind yet. And down here, I'm going to say you're 18 years old because that's how old most people are when they're starting college. So you start college, you trudge along here, you get an, a, a pre-med advisor, at some point and they tell you what you need to be doing and one of the biggest things you need to do third year of undergrad is take the MCAT so you do that in your third year take the MCAT hopefully you do well on it uh, if you go to medicalschoolhq.net we have a, a good long post about what kind of scores you need so you take your MCAT there, you do well, you get great letters of recommendation. During this whole time, you are volunteering, you are shadowing all important things to get good letters of recommendation to prove to the admissions committees that you, you want to be a doctor and that you know what being a doctor really means. So we do all that and we get into medical school. So we start medical school here, and if you go straight through college into medical school, you're going to be about 22 years old. It's four years for college, and then you get another four years for medical school. So you are typically about 26 years old by the time you finish medical school, and again, this is if you're not taking any time off for research or any kind of dual degrees. So four years, 26 years old by the time you get your MD after your name and you start your residencies. So I'm going to just go ahead and fill this in here. Start residency. I apologize for my handwriting. I am a doctor. Uh, then let's go ahead and go here. Uh, these two check marks in here are going to be your USMLE or COMLEX. USMLE is for allopathic schools. COMLEX is for osteopathic schools. So we have step one or level one and step two and level two. You take your step three somewhere around here. Um, Usually, uh, by the end of your first year of, of residency, a lot of residencies are requiring it now. So let's go ahead and write it in here, step three. So you start your residency, and the type of residency that you're doing is going to determine how long you're actually in residency. 
most of your primary care residencies are going to be three years. That includes peds, family practice, and internal medicine. These are going to be these are going to be three years. You get uh, some other residencies like neuro uh, is four years, um, and surgery is going to be five years. Neurosurgery is going to be seven years. So the this time in here is going to be determined by what you actually specialize in. And then you finish your residency, and now a lot of people nowadays are doing a fellowship. And a fellowship is just an additional year or two on top of your residency where you are pretty much hunkered down and doing a lot of repetitive surgeries or seeing a lot of the same type of diseases to actually get very familiar uh, with those diseases. For instance, if you're doing orthopedic surgery and you want to be a foot and ankle specialist, you will see lots of feet. Uh, you can do spine, you can do hand. If you are a internal medicine resident, you can go on and do cardiology, gastroenterology, uh, pulmonology. So those would be fellowships on, to on top of your residency. And once you are done with your residency, then you can go out and be an attending and actually uh, start working by yourself, for yourself, and start paying back your loans. Remember, it's a very long process. You're looking at four years for college, typically, plus four years for medical school, plus a minimum of three years for your residency, and then maybe a year to a fellowship. Maybe you're doing a seven-year residency, so it adds up. And remember, all this takes a lot of money and a lot of dedication. So uh, I hope you can read that and you kind of follow it along. If you have any questions, go ahead and stop by medicalschoolhq.net. Leave us a comment. You can uh, go hang out with our social networks. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. This is Dr. Gray signing off. Have a great day.